as in dry, it bonds better. So I'm using Wave Gels 212. Is there um, what you call it, powder here? I like it. It's like, like a mauvey. It's gonna be amazing. Hit that share button for me, guys. I really appreciate it. Hola, cómo está? So I figured out what was wrong with my page earlier. Mm -mm. Facebook decided to give me the whatever the top fan badges, whatever, yada yada on my personal page and they like kind of mess with my account so my account couldn't like post anything. I was freaking out thinking I was getting hacked. I'm using my 14 Kalinsky. It's gonna be my crimp brush. Look how nice this brush is. You take care of your shit, guys. It's a nice buttery powder. Three seconds, boom, marbles. Ooh, before I do that, you guys see how like I use my stiletto tips and it's kind of like curved here. I'm gonna show you guys how to fold this in okay like as in sculpt this so it's more square okay it's one of those things when using stiletto tips the longer the nails are you kind of get that little tiny curve at the tip there so be able to wait for the powder to dry a little bit before you start moving it it's almost like a mauve nude And I'm gonna move the powder slowly down the base of the nail. Now, as it dries, it gets a little more firm. You see now, I can sculpt that corner out because it's more dry, it's more firm. Now my monomer is a medium setting monomer, so I'm able to work like this. It's not running. And now I'm able to sculpt out and now you won't be able to see that little edge anymore because I'm sculpting it out. Yeah, see? And now we don't have that little tiny edge more because I'm sculpting it up. You gotta hit that share button for me guys, please. Share in your small groups, share in your Facebook pages. Now dad's back doing lives. <laughs> Been a long week in Vegas. There you go. Nice, right? Give me your hands. <laughs> Oop. I don't know why I pretend like I was gonna move to another hand. This is my second bead. It's gonna be my Kiriko bead. And also my Apex bead. And this part are just so nice and buttery. It gives me a lot of time to work with it. No capping necessary. Look at that. See? Clean up this spot a little bit. That's fine. We can use a hand filer. Oh, that's the, <laughs> that's from the glue. It's fine. That's from the glue. But ideally, your structures should be there with just two beads. All you need. Mm -hmm. How about you doing the day? Where are you guys watching from? Introduce yourself. Introduce yourself. I know some of you guys just like to sit there and watch, but sometimes I want to see, hear from you. Introduce yourself. Nail tech. From where do you enjoy my content? So I'm slowly moving the powder down. But see, I want to get to the edge. I'm going to be careful. I'm going to hit it to the middle. Just widen it out a little bit. But it's not going to fold over to the side because my powder is a little bit dry. So now I'm able to just, boom, cut that powder off and give myself a more square tip instead of having that cave in like a ballerina look. See that? Woo! Shape with my brush. There you guys go. 
You can even see the down here where it filled in. And that's how you get around that. I know a lot of you guys are like, God, how do I get around that? You definitely gotta make sure that when the powder gets to that edge there, it's gonna be nice and medium consistency. So of course my second bead. Look how buttery this powder is. It's wet, but it won't flood. That's what I like about this new wave gel powder. Wet, but no floody. Clean up the sides. Use the whole brush to brush it in, get it nice and smooth. Netherlands, UK, ooh, all the UK, all the European nations on South Texas, Florida, Phoenix, Jacksonville, Florida, okay, Memphis, Chicago, Atlanta, Lincoln. I love it when my, uh, my uh, nail techs from UK and European nations come out to play. You see how this is very sharp, sharp and pointy there? Now, if I was going to move this powder when it's wet all the way down the nail, what's going to happen? It's going to take on that shape. No. When I move it, it's going to be a medium consistency like this. So when I get to the tip, I'm able to control and sculpt what I want out instead of having to take on what the tip wants me to. See? Now I'm able to sculpt the shape I want. And just like that, I'm going to do my own thing. Very lightly, though. Because remember, even if it's a little bit dry, it doesn't mean it's still sensitive. It's moldable. It's more like an al dente. I try to get the powder to be al dente. If you guys want to use food terms to make it easier. So like, you know, when your pasta is too, too overcooked, it's too wet and stringy. And when it's too, when it's too dry, it's, it's too hard. Al dente is when it's like has it's soft, but has a bite to it. So it gives you the ability for you to mold and sculpt acrylic. Almost like if you're doing the forms, to be honest with you. See that? And you can also change the shape, change the direction of the nail, and you're able to shape it just like that. So see how this tip, it's kind of curved at the tip because it's a stiletto. Hey, hey. South Africa, yeah, there's so many nail techs in South Africa. Oh, <laughs> thank you for reminding me. I'm trying to start a new finger. I don't know why I'm thinking I'm doing French or something, ombre or something. This nude is so nice. It's like it's a good cover nude for any design, to be honest with you. Nice and simple application two beads gets you the whole nail. Hello, hello, Tracy O'Neill from the UK. Do you have a starter kit? Um, Nikki Love, I don't really do starter kits. I really believe in just telling the you guys what you guys need for what you guys are practicing. I I think starter kits are something more of like I don't know. Sometimes in starter kits, a lot of times you don't you spend money on things you don't need. I, th I feel like a lot of companies will give you starter kits and they'll add stuff on there that you really necessarily don't need. Uh, whenever a, a beginner asks me about nails, I ask them how long they've been doing nails. What do they need? I want you to make sure that you're spending money on everything you need at that time at your what you're currently working on. You know, like if you're not, you don't need all this other stuff, then you don't need to buy it. Save your money, you know, because beginners, yes, you gotta make sure you utilize your income, your money correctly, because you're not making money right away. So a starter kit for me is like basically um, a nice brush, some acrylic, some tips, a mannequin hand. Just to practice your application, I think the application is the most important thing with nails. So a lot of starter kits will start giving you like all these forms, or forms is fine too. If you want to practice, start off with forms. They give you like uh, bonder, primer. I'm like, what do you need that for? You're gonna be working on a mannequin hand. You don't need to worry about that. 
and then they're gonna give you like all this like other stuff that you really don't necessarily need and I feel like that's a waste of money so not hating on the starter kits I just don't believe in starter kits I feel like you need to c customize your own I would love a customizable starter kit where basically get stuff that you need instead of being forced to buy what they have because a lot of times a lot of nail techs will have a lot of stuff they don't even ever use or not even know how to use I'm a big advocate for beginners so I gotta make sure beginners save money and they make sure they they learn the right using the right tools and save themselves a lot of hassle in the future and if you haven't been following me I appreciate the love on Instagram too guys on the posts and the content I know my main platform is here on Facebook where I would love to build my Instagram up more make sure you turn up that bell to get all my posts and stuff Are you order for the Netherlands? I don't know. I don't th like when you're in the UK and Netherlands area. You guys have different products than us here in the United States. I feel bad. A lot of times, you guys have different products. You guys can't don't have the same access to the same products as we do. And you you definitely use different products up there. I'm still using Beauty Gel. Same technique I'm doing, sculpting the powder out. I appreciate all the shares of the content, guys. Helps people get the content, get a hold of it. Because I can't share too much on Facebook or they'll say, ah, you're spamming. So I run that issue a lot. So when you guys do it, it gives me the ability to reach more and more beginners. or someone that, you know, likes my content and such. area make sure it's nice and flush makes it easy for me to work on the nails later and then cuticle work and stuff like that put a little more powder here in the base because it's a little bit sunk in here just gonna brush it up just to balance everything out make sure it's nice and one even coat There you go, your application is finished with one hand in less than about 15 minutes. No, I don't strip to the Netherlands. So you guys see this one? You see how pointed that tip is, more like a ballerina? Well, let's change that. So I'm not gonna dry this part down right away because it's still a little bit wet. I'm gonna give it a little bit more time to cook. Then, when I know that it's a little bit al dente. I'm gonna drag it down and bring in the sides, but I'm not gonna be careful at the tip here because I want to make sure it's more boxy. So I want to flatten it on the middle more and then start sculpting myself in just to where I need it. So right about there. Let's go just like that you see just because you're working with tips does not mean we don't have some you know a little bit of sculpting ability guys and for those
those of you guys are students here, make sure you post this link into the group for me, please. Thank you. So the students can watch it. I really want my students to have continued education and for the new students to have, you know, prepare themselves with a lot of techniques uh, I'll be teaching and I'll be able to help them in person for the class. Wow, look at that. It's a whole new nail. Probably the biggest problem with a lot of nail techs is that the timing. It's gonna be a really fun design. I'm gonna have to do stones on this too. Now, when the powder's a little bit dry, I'm gonna start shaping a little bit, tiny bit here and then the sides. My tip's a little bit thin, so I want to put some more powder here, just to blend it upward. I didn't have enough powder earlier. That's fine. Yeah, I'll blend it upward, just to blend in with that second bead there, to give myself, to level it out. Um, you don't want to do too thick, I just want it to level out so that it doesn't dip down too much. I want a smooth transition, I want the, the thickness to be proper so that the nails don't break, okay? There we go. It's a transition that people have issues with when they build Apex. crisp. And the second B is very important that we put on at the right time. We don't place it at the cuticle because we don't want to flood the cuticle. This powder is so buttery that you probably will never have flooding issues with this powder. Um, I'm just, I'm using this with my monomer. My medium setting monomer so is a little bit different, okay guys? So if you're using a, like a Young Nails Valentino or C&D or Mia Secret, you may have a little bit more runny consistency. My EMA powder is, um, is more of a um, medium setting, so it sets a little bit more medium, so you won't run into the, any of the issues with it really uh, runny. But I can't say for other monomers, I don't know if my monomer will make any powder buttery because of the way the monomer is made. Um, it's not based off on the powder. A lot of people think the powder is what, you know, the yes, the powder has plays a role in how monomer reacts. A little spot missing here. But in the, in the end of the day, it's the monomer that is the main reactant, the main, the main cause of your powder is gonna be buttery, runny, or dry. So make sure that you, you, you uh, troubleshoot it correctly. Because a lot of people th will just jump in and get a different powder and use the same monomer. It may not be the powder, it may be the monomer. So check with that too, okay? 
don't want you to spend money and start jumping around different products. As now that we have to understand the products so we can get better, you know, troubleshoot what we're having issues with. My model with any powder will be the same consistent as this. So it happens that it works really well with um, wave gel. It does not mean that it won't, that it will, it's the, mod, the, the powder. Let's cut this out a little bit. So generally when I, you won't have this issue when you're doing like shorter stilettos, uh, coffin, you cut the stiletto tip down. Because I'm doing it so long, it's right at the tip, and the tip of the stiletto is actually going to be a little bit more, um, comes in a little bit more sharp. That's why I have to sculpt a little bit to make sure that my shape, a uh, long coffin is a long coffin, not long ballerina. Watch it marble. See that? How it gets nice and shiny? That means it's marble. It means that when I put it on, it's not going to be runny, it's not going to be too dry. It's going to be a perfect consistency. Cause I got my timing down, understand my product, understand my beads, my control. Eventually when you start working more and more consistency, you'll start seeing it too. And it just becomes a repetition. You don't even think about it at that point. You're just, you're just working. Same process every nail you do. You never run into any issues. That's how you can speed up your, your sets by being more efficient with your work. Every nail should take about the same amount of time to do. You do the same beads, bigger beads and you know bigger nails, but only the nail that you're ever gonna do switching bead size is probably your pinky and your thumb. Pinky being smaller, thumb being bigger. Um, the others, the ones, index, ring finger, they're all the same size, more or less. So you should be picking up the same bead, you should be finishing every of those fingers the same amount of time. If it takes you five minutes for a finger, that means it takes you. Uh, that means it takes you 15 minutes for three fingers application. Um, let's add another 10 minutes for the um, thumb and the pinky, right? So now you that's you know 15 plus 10, 25. The whole hand should take you what? 50 minutes. That's that's just a very long guesstimate. I'm thinking. I'm assuming you're not going to take five minutes per finger. I hope not. I hope you all would take at least a few minutes per finger but even if i'm giving a, a rough guesstimate a very long guesstimate that really gives you a lot of time right you should be under an hour laying acrylic i know time is a big issue for a lot of nail techs being able to this one i'm gonna put a little bit more powder on there because it's a bigger finger I think I'm good with that one. Wow, perfect amount. There we go. I should be done with my application. It probably took me about less than 30 minutes, I'm assuming. I can't see the timing, but you guys can. I'm gonna clean my brush like I always do. Feather it through, make sure I have no acrylic stuck in there. Perfect. Get a little bit of monomer. This monomer is gonna be thrown away, so use it as much as you can to clean your brush before you throw it away. Don't waste it. Once I feel there's nothing stuck in there, I'm gonna shape the brush together. And there you go. I have my brush, nice and clean. All that old monomer, I'm just gonna put it in my paper towel, put it in a sealed container and throw it away so I don't have my studio smelling like that monomer. And of course, we're gonna go right into shaping. And I don't really have to shape that much because remember, my shaping should already be there from my application. So just a quick couple of swipes, follow through, clean up underneath if you have any excess. Had a little bit of glue here earlier from the pinky. So I'm gonna make sure I get that glue out. And as you guys see, it took me about a few seconds, 15, 20, 30 seconds to get that shape. And just rinse and repeat the same process. 
I shape with my acrylic, so I don't really have to use this hand filer. My hand filer is not used for shaping. It's just to make my shape look crispier. That's it. You should be able to see your shape already when you finish the application. That's the goal. Okay, guys? Twenty-five minutes. Oh, not bad for application for a long set. That's an ideal time. Twenty-five minutes. I'm ranging around twenty. Some twenty, twenty-five minutes is a good ballpark for me for my application for a long set like this. Shorter, I might be quicker. And if I wasn't doing a live stream, I definitely would have been under twenty minutes, around fifteen minutes for application. Sometimes when I'm live stream at the top show, it takes up a little bit of my time, but. What makes Marmor evaporate so fast? Marmor doesn't really evaporate fast. Um, it actually evaporates slower than um, than uh, acetone. But because it's a chemical reagent, um, the chemical, the reason why it evaporates is you see the fume, the, the smell of monomer? The smell of monomer is from the evaporation, okay? That's where you get the smell from. It evaporates quicker. Because it's a chemical that is a, an accelerant, okay? It accelerates. Um, the acrylic to dry. So of course, any accelerant will actually evaporate faster because the part of drying it off is heat and heat is the accelerant and then that's why it, monomer dries fast, evaporates faster. Mm -hmm. Let me sure everything is the same length, cuticle to cuticle. Let's scoot the chair over a little bit this way. There you go. So I always measure cuticle to cuticle if I see anything is a little bit off. I'm gonna just fix it here. Sometimes, you know, when you're pinching off the acrylic at the tip. It's important is when you take pictures, you'll see that they're all, see my pinky almost the same length as everything else. I think my middle finger is a little bit longer than everything else. My middle and this finger, okay. Can see a bit. And I'm good. Same thing with this hand. So I'm careful not to over file because you might shorten your nails too much and it'll be uneven to the other ones. Very important. less strokes. Don't be filing 10 strokes on one on one side, okay? You don't want that. Get these corners nice and clean.
Same thing I do. Make sure I measure. Oh, this one's perfect. Ooh, perfect. Side profile. Same consistency. So just quickly hand file or just just the base, make sure to smooth everything out. Now you can do you can use a drill bit for this, but sometimes when your application is smooth, you don't want to bring a drill bit to this because you don't want to actually accidentally put too much pressure and it drills into the acrylic. Then you have uneven surfaces, and then you have to drill everything down, and make it thinner. So a hand file will definitely give you more control, as then you won't be able, you won't eat into it too much. See? Smooth. ASMR. <laughs> A lot of people say that my voice is easy to listen to on the live streams, which is a blessing, I guess. Imagine if I had an annoying voice. Okay, you guys, now you're gonna be... <laughs> I'm going in a circular motion because I want an arch. There you guys go. It takes me about maybe five, ten minutes per hand. Five minutes if it's quick. And I just really just go through it. Just so I can limit, so eliminate my drill later. I don't have to drill the base later because it's nice and smooth already. I just clear it out. I don't have to worry about actually accidentally pushing down too hard and eating into the acrylic unnecessarily. This won't hurt the client's hands either because you're not hitting the actual nail. Once you get the apex area, apex area protects it from hitting the cuticle area. Oh, thank you, Frankie Enfield. Appreciate all your support. The best way to support me is by sharing the content. Also following the social media. And that's why I got the links down there for you guys want to buy any nail supplies with a discount. This powder is from Wave Gel. Very, very good powder. I love this color, actually. I try to keep the video under an hour every time I do a set just to get to have time to watch the whole thing. No way you're gonna sit there for two hours watching me do dance. After I finish doing this, I'm gonna go and do the cuticle work with my drill. I use my 501 sharp bit that I've customized.
We're doing the cuticle work right now. Point you guys drill this, it's going to be very nice and flush. This keeps you from having any lifts. And remember, when we smooth this out, we can just go with my drill bit and just run it down, up and down like this. It smooths it out, it takes rid of all the ridges, but it doesn't eat it into it. So, you got to be very soft handed with it, okay. You gotta flush these cuticles, guys. That's what's gonna keep it from lifting, okay? Bring everything out. I move my client's hands where I need it to go. Don't ever reposition yourself. blend it all out. These corners need to be blended also, okay? See that? Nice and smooth. This is my five and one sharp, fine bit. It's custom, the way it's cut, it's uh, cross cut. A lot of five and ones you see in the market is um, all vertical cut. I like the cross cut better because I don't really like to drill down acrylic when I'm working because I do all my applications smoothly. I want something that's gonna be smooth and it transitions nicely. So this one really smooth, it, trans it smooths and removes minimal. And it gives me a nice, cuticle area, a nice body of the nail. And also, I can do this without worrying about it eating into the acrylic. If you use any other bit and you do this, I use very light pressure, no pressure at all. It smooths out all the hand filing, but without having to eat into the acrylic. So later when I buff, everything's gonna be nice and finesse.
Okay, let's go. You see? Nice and pristine. Hello, Corinne. You making me want to do what's that right now? Do what's that right now, Jasmine. Why not? Look at that. Just right up and down. Look how smooth that looks. See that? That's how you do keto work. That's how I do keto work anyways. And I go through really quick quick because you know I already flush my cuticles down with my application. I know exactly where I need to go for it. Same thing with this hand. Rinse and repeat, and you're finished with your set and you do designs. Simple. Repeat. Rinse and repeat.
see how your classes are opening since so beginner friendly. You may have to take up on that. <laughs> yeah, it is beginner friendly. All my salon ready classes are very beginner friendly. A lot of people are really scared of the cuticle work because they you guys spend too much time in the cuticle area. Um, cuticle work it means that you're going to go through and you work on the cuticles, but it doesn't mean you have to spend a lot of time there. Do your applications to the point where you don't have to really do a lot of cuticle work. Because I, I flush my cuticles down already, so I don't really have to, to do a lot. So I just go through and just clean it up a little bit, and I'm done. I'm not going to stay in there and drill, 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 and have the ability to have my nails uh, to cut my client or, you know, or, or draw out too much acrylic. So you get in there, work in it, and you get out. A lot of times people spend too much time in there. That's why you have issues with the cuticle work. Um, do your application nice and flush. Just then don't have too much acrylic here. Don't have it all over the cuticle area. You'll be able to just position your drill bit, go in there and get it done. Once it's cleaned out, you're done going in there. Don't go in there anymore. Okay, start blending everything forward. Smoothing everything out. to the cuticle area. Barely any work at all. It's because I flushed my cuticles with my acrylic earlier, with my acrylic brush. So I don't so I don't give myself too much acrylic there to drill. I'm only getting in there just to clean out that area in the cuticle area bay. And I'll be able to clean up all this with that hand file earlier. People say, oh, that's redundant how you're doing that after your hand file. I'm not drilling it, I'm just cleaning off so that way when I buff it, it don't leave any marks and and stuff like that. So that's that's fine with me. Okay. So now I just take my buffer. Buff underneath, get any excess out. Shouldn't have anything. So see earlier, I ran my drill down the nail, just so that I can don't have to use too much of this buffer. This buffer is just for me to use it to smooth out the nail, you know, get rid of any excess, any rough corners. But everything's so smooth, as you can see, this buffer is just gonna make it more smoother. Smoother surface for me to do designs later. Okay, wash your hands. Set done. I'm pretty sure I'm under 45 minutes to an hour, but generally that's a good time. We're gonna get the gel machine out. I'm gonna use white gel polish and I'm gonna use this white glitter and I'm gonna sprinkle on there for some designs. I have, and then I'm gonna do some rhinestones. It'll be fun. Um, first, I'm gonna top coat it first though. Um, Cause I want it to be the nude to be shiny and the glitter to be kind of matted looking. Or should I do it all matted looking? Yeah, yeah I'm doing all matted looking. So first thing I'm going to first, I'll put some new pair of gloves on right now because I don't want to get any product on my skin. Take 
take a little bit of gel polish, white gel polish. Uh, uh, uh. I want to matte the whole nail first. I'm going to use my matte top coat. Look at that, guys. Set done. Nice and crispy. Ooh, I like this color. Let's do a nice coat of matte. I'm doing a sugaring technique, so I want to protect my set first with this matte. the curing machine. We're going to cure for 60 seconds. So now I'm going to use my liner brush. Look at that in the mat. Look at that mat, guys. Ooh. These two I'm going to do a different design. But these, all these ones, I'm going to do a deep French. I'm just going to use gel polish. Usually I'll use art gel, but in this case, I'll use gel polish because I want a sticky surface. So I'm going to do a deep French. Fill it in, don't worry. So after this, I'm going to fill it in. Ooh, that's red on there. I'm going to use my oval brush and fill in the white. And remember, you don't have to coat this too much because we're going to sprinkle some glitters on this. So it just needs to be sticky. It doesn't have to be fully coated, okay? I just want to make sure that that deep French is there. So I'm going to fill it in first. I'm going to have the guideline where I want to fill it in. That's okay if you can't get in the corner. We'll use the liner brush again to get up there. And... Okay. 
Okay, so for the ones that we can't get in the corners, we're just gonna go through with our liner brush again and finish it off any spots. And we're gonna be able to bring in this deep French right now. Just like that. That's really all we need because we're going to be sprinkling glitter and it's going to bond to that and it's going to cure it on top of there. So yes, you don't have to have a, a nice coat of white because the glitter is going to make up for that see-throughness. And you don't want it too thick either. You don't want to use art gel for this because art gel sometimes cures very smooth and shiny. So it doesn't really have a sticky surface when it cures. And it's really not as sticky as this, so then it won't, the glitter won't bond onto it. And I don't wanna waste art gel for this design either because the white's not the star, it's the glitter that we're gonna put on as the star. So art gel is more for you to do precision work. So save that product. And just use regular white gel polish, any white gel polish is fine. Like I said, you don't really need a consistent coat because we're gonna be sprinkling some glitter on this. Just like that. We'll sprinkle, oop, let me move this back. Let me wait a little bit. And the glitter will bond to that. Remember our matte top coat's already cured, so we can just, it won't bond to the matte top coat. Try to cure. Should you get the thumb there? Do you want to start this one yet or not yet? No. Okay. I want to dust it off first. Oh. Okay. Thank you, Debbie McQueen. The stars. So now, after this cures, I thought you can do it 30 seconds. See it? See your hand? And just lightly dust off the excess. And look. See? It covers it up. So I'm gonna do the other hand and I'm gonna do the other design. The two finger design I'm do a little bit harder. This is just deep French, it's a little bit more simple. So I'm gonna go through and just do this real quick, okay guys? Once you get the hang of this, actually it becomes pretty fast. And where's that other brush? Did it fall down? Oh, there it is. See, I'm just lightly coating it. My main focus is getting this in here, making sure that my deep French is nice and deep. I'm not really worried about anything else here. Set. I'm making sure everything is just nice and precise.
There you go. And you can even fix your deep curve right now with your liner brush. It doesn't have to be perfect because we have to go back through with the liner brush anyways. So anything you need to fix, you can also fix with this liner brush here, okay? It's a longer brush, so it bends nicely to the curvature. And repeat. So the middle, the ring finger and the pointer finger, I'm gonna do a little bit more a swirl design, a little bit more harder. So I'm gonna do that last. I'm gonna make sure this is nice and cured and already ready and ready to go before I before I do that one, okay? And for those ones, I'll do a swirl design. Mm. I'm gonna use my shorter brush for this because it's gonna be a swirl design. I don't wanna use a long brush because a long brush will bend. I need to use my detailer brush for this. So I give myself some more gel polish. Brush is still a little bit stiff, sorry. So it's still stiff because it has gel polish in it, so it won't bend. I need to clean it a little bit more. The reason why I can't use my other brush, there you go. It's nice and flexible now. First for my swirl. Okay. Now I put I put texture into my swirls. So this one's a little bit harder. You have to be a little bit more precise. As I mean as that possible, just take your time. Do not rush it.
Mm. Messed that up. That's okay. Here, let's clean it up. And until you cure it, don't worry about it. Get that little harsh. No one's perfect when it when it comes to doing nails, okay? Can we do these lines? I think I'm happy with that. I want to do a line in here, but I think it'll be too much. So. So first I do the, just a thin line, okay? Okay, two more fingers, guys. I know this shit. It, this, I know this last one isn't easy, isn't it? Is it? <laughs> it ain't, guys. Like doing stuff like this, it requires a lot of intricacies.
You don't do that. It's so hard to do the, the opposite of this one. Sorry guys, I'm really, really quiet when I do this. When it comes to art, I have to be quiet. I don't talk as much. Apologies. Get these these corners, this curve, nice and crisp, because that's gonna be what's gonna show up.
Okay. So we are done. You know, I'll tie all this in. Some rhinestones. She came to play. Get some nice opal rhinestones. So just make everything nice and nice. Mm. Oh, there's still people in here watching this live? Do some quick runs, sounds so quick to get you guys on out of here with the final look key. Getting you guys out of here in my closet. I want to get out of here too. Where's that box of It holds up forever. <laughs> the glitter will hold forever. They better build their glue. Build their gel. This one might be too big. Just like that, you're ready to get married. No, my hand, God damn it, I'm so stupid. My hand was all over that thing. This would be a good wedding nail design. Are you getting married? Or you wanna show up at your sister's wedding and show her up as a bridesmaid with these nails? She'd be like, can you see what she showed up at my wedding wearing? She's trying to outdo me on my wedding day. You know.
if you're into that kind of thing. Stones are only gonna go on to these. The ones that are at the re the ones that have the French, we're not gonna put the stones on the other one. Just the French nails. Let's cure that first. I'll do the thumb later. See the thumb. What happened earlier? Oh, so, um, Kimara was doing a regular full set and it turned out really bad and she was in China Bay, so it was just happening. Alright, I'll talk to her later. I saw she was doing like some stupid long set. Yeah. She needs to work on it before she starts doing those big crazy sets. She's not ready to be using those tips. Yeah. Take her off those sets, okay? I don't want her to do sets. I don't want any issues. Mm -hmm. You guys want to go out to eat today? Today? Um... Tree already left. What the heck? What time plan, is it? You should plan it next weekend. What's well, so Jenny can come back? I wanted to go without Jenny so she'd be all mad. Really? You're so mean. <laughs> so, you so you plan it so everybody can go? Mm, no. I want to make Jenny mad. So, do you see me mean as a boss? I'm mean as a boss? <laughs> You guys are spoiled as shit. I know, we are. You guys are so spoiled. Mm -hmm. We're your, 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 your golden childs. Mm hmm. Problem child, too. Mm -hmm. Surprised I got something burned down the slime when I'm gone. I know. It's good. Because I'm holding it down. We're all holding it down. Yeah, you guys got busy today. Hustling. Next time she shouldn't be doing them long crazy sets. She's not ready. Waste her time. Waste. Her. She could have been doing a lot of other clients. Mm -hmm. So many clients sitting around waiting for services. Mm -hmm. No, and if you no way you do anything over an hour and a half here, okay? Keep the timing. All right, go home and. Go home and get on one knee and pop that question. I love that you have your dog and I have my dog. It's my Do you? Favorite. Yeah, I was mad at my boyfriend, so I changed it. So it just changes to yours now? No, I just changed it to um, the yeah. dog. Flash care real quick. Mm. Are you done with this hand? Yeah, I'm done with the hand. I already did the thumb. Okay. Let's go finish the thumb and show everybody the finished look. Yeah, I'm still on live. People are like, dang, now that I've never seen you a set this long. I know. I don't really drag over an hour, but sometimes with sets like this, like I said, when you're doing design, sometimes it does take that long. That's why you want to finish your set fast, as fast as you can, you know, so that you can save your time for designs. Because this set would have been a lot longer if I had spent more time with my structure. Doesn't mean that I'm trying to tell you to rush, but this is why we, we want to stay under that time limit. You gotta be quicker with your design, your your set, so you give yourself more time to design. Because you can finesse the application process, but when it comes to art, you have to take your time. You know? Kayla's 
bounced back. She came back from her medical leave and she's doing good. Her client's been waiting for her to come back for the longest time. Uh, All righty, and... Her, her and Jenny clients, they cannot, like Jenny clients can go to Kayla and Kayla clients can go to Jenny. Yeah, because they both have some different personalities. Mm -hmm. They so, do the same shit. Mm -hmm. And Jenny don't like Kayla clients. Kayla don't like Jenny clients. And none of y'all like my clients. No, I like her. I like you. No, I like you too. I slayed your toes. He yeah, said they look great. I like white toes. Yeah. I feel like there you guys like go. Hope you guys That's like the them. Same. Appreciate you guys staying a little longer distance to see that it's done finished. But wow, look at you. Go on and get married, girl. Go on and get married. Right, you. Yeah, you. Mm -hmm. I, I was laying jump too, guys. Ooh, damn!